Hello and welcome to It's Not a Sport, episode 4. Um, this is literally the week before E3, so we have a great discussion about E3, about the games that are going to be there, about what we want to see from the games, and what we'd like to, you know, surprise us and appear. I'm going to talk about the two difference, uh, the difference between buying to progress and buying to to basically uh, get ahead. So moving on to our esports section section of this week, it's really on the down low. Um, the League of Legends esports starts up on June sixteenth for the summer split for NA. Uh, it's the first game is a hundred thieves versus Team Liquid, and then for Overwatch League. Um, they're also on the down low where they just finished their first season with, uh, the total, uh, games played is New York is, uh, 32 and four. Then Los Angeles is 24 and 12. And then London is 23 and 13. Hope you enjoy this week's, uh, podcast. I'm going to be at E3. I'm going to play as much as I can. I hope you watch the pot, uh, the streams and the reveals for this year's E3. Let's move on to our next segment. All right. So last week we talked about again about the different play models of video games. Um, now I'm going to talk about kind of a sub genre of that which is uh play to win and really pay to progress and it's very it, it's it's interesting because it's if it affects both cultures it's 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 a cultural thing so here in the united states we absolutely despise pay to pay to win it's not something we enjoy we don't want to spend money to basically get ahead of others we want to actually work for it and earn it and we are also very sort of sketchy towards play to progress which can it's it's and because of that it's really like pay to progress is on the borderline of being play to win but not entirely there so it's kind of like we just look at it funny but in eastern countries like in china and russia like they're really china chinese games are really pay to win because they're willing to pay money in order to get ahead of others and now the reason because both societies are so different is because well According to the article I read, they want results. Where we want more of like a sense of satisfaction of actually, you know, accomplishing that goal. They just want results and they just want to win. Which is very, it's a very interesting mentality. So that's why they're willing to pay for their games. If you look at a game, I played uh, Blade and Soul for a number of years. Uh, it's, it's a Korean MMO. The Chinese version... Is very, very, very heavily pay to win compared to the other versions. And even now, for us, that game is it's borderline now kind of pay to win. And it was always going there and you could see it, but now it's you know it's there. And but it's not to the extent where China, where every single mechanic is just in order to get ahead, you have to spend money. So, my two views on these uh, two kind of subjects is that, well, I, I'm more on the American side of the argument where I don't really particularly like pay to win. Um, and I really, it's really sketchy when it becomes pay to progress for me as well. I think it's just pay to win is just a no. It's not... It's not healthy for the consumer, 
and it's not healthy for the game. But when it comes to pay to progress, of uh, I'm okay with that. I've you know of course I've I've done it. I don't have a problem with it. It's just when they push it to like, for instance, Blade and Soul, where you had the, which is a free to play game. I want to keep that in mind as well where you had the Trove, which was basically a slot machine that came every uh, quarter. And the first Trove was what really, for me, dove, pushed the game off the edge for it being not a good game. Because people who are willing to spend money on the Trove were able to have a huge, huge, huge head start above anybody else. Which made it become kind of the people who had and the people who didn't. So the people, the free-to-play people, had to work and spend more time than the people who spent money on the trove. So each trove, they would just keep spending money and keep getting head and head, which then created the elite, like being better than everyone else in the game, which really hurt the community. And the company did nothing about it. But, you know, they didn't want to do nothing about it because they were making, you know, boatloads of money off of the people who were, you know, paying for Trove. And it basically became where if you didn't really pay for Trove in one way or another, whether with time or real money, then you would be left behind in the dust. And that sort of pay to progress is it's not healthy. That's when it starts to become pay to win. Now, the other my other example is Warframe. Warframe is entirely pay to progress. It is a game where I don't have to spend money on it at all in order to move on. It is also free to play. Warframe, however, will shove its items in front of your face in order to make you buy the real microtransaction. Because that's how they make, you know, their money. You don't have to spend money at all in that game. But they will, but on first glance, for a new player, they shove just microtransaction on microtransaction. Hey, if you want this item, you can buy it for 20 plat. And that's when it just becomes, it's a little overwhelming for new players. It's not a problem, but it just becomes overwhelming. So anyway, oh, there's one more type type of form of kind of pay to progress, and that we see it in uh, apps, and apps are like apps like uh, free to play apps like Candy Crush, where they give you a certain amount of time, certain amount of you know, uh, time before you can play again, and then you could pay to progress, and that's. That's it's actually a mix of both, and that's something that plagues free-to-play games, and that's why I brought it up um, to remind you of last week's conversation. Is just that of in order to get ahead, to be better than my opponent, or just to move on in the game, I have to spend money, and that type of play model is not good. Uh, I think the South Park episode, uh, I forget the name of it, but it's the one where it's the Terrace and Phillips fart game and uh, I think Stan got hooked is like one of you know it's a great example of just this model and how it's not healthy at all and how we should change it I also one the last thing I want to talk about is in recent news uh, because of E3 and now we're getting all like the little bits and pieces of many different puzzles uh, Destiny 2 has always been a game that I want to enjoy, and I still play it, but I just can't really enjoy it. And it's it's not what Destiny was for me. Um, the path that they took, I don't want to say it's the wrong path, but it was not the path they should have took. They should have built upon the path that they've already were on. So, 
I bring this up because they recently announced uh, and revealed some of the new stuff that's coming up in September. And, well, they have a time lock system in that game, which makes it extremely controversial because it's a game that I spend 60 plus dollars to play and then I get time locked out of it. That's a sort of free to play mechanic that is in a game that I bought to play. And I just want to bring this up because that is again where I gave the previous examples where it is okay to do that because it's free to play and they need to time lock you that is not a healthy example. Um, I'm just bringing this up because they announced a new expansion and we've gotten the two expansions already. Curse of Osiris was flop. It was dog shit. Uh, Warmind was a little bit better, but nothing fantastic. Um, it's apparently going to be their E3 and I hope I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm a fan of the game. I just hope it's good. It gets better. I just want not everyone to be too excited about it. Not to jump in heads first, because I f we we tend to get on hype trains before, you know, No Man's Sky. Great example. Anyway, we'll be moving on to our next segment. Uh, me, TJ, Kane, and Tito talk about what we want to see from E3 and just our you know our predictions and everything that's coming. Make sure to subscribe to us on our Instagram, our YouTube, and Twitter. All, you know, social media. You can follow me at, at Salty Waffles. Uh, I'm generally on there as well. All right, let's move on to our next segment. I'm here with TJ Kane and Tito, and uh, this week is a big week in uh, just the gaming industry in general, because uh, E3 is happening. So we're going to talk about our predictions and what we really would want to see from E3, and the games that they've announced, and the rumors as well. So the first conference is EA. What's everyone's opinion on just EA as a company? Um, they do a lot of sports games. Wow. I just hear a lot of hate from them in terms of just, like, fucking the community over in so many different ways, especially with Battlefront 2. So I'm not, I mean, I'm not really a big fan of the company, so I don't have any real opinions on them. Tito? Uh, I only know them from, uh, Battlefront 2 and sports games. So, yeah, in the recent uh, years, EA has not been a favorable company. Mm -hmm. uh, the launch of you know Battlefront 2, as you mentioned, was completely a mess. The big games that I think they have this year, E3, that they la I know they announced last year was Anthem, and Anthem was supposed to be. Uh, people were saying it was the Destiny killer. Sadly, Destiny killed Destiny. But it's made by the same people who made Mass Effect. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, we have Beyond Good and Evil 2, which I believe was a PS2 Beyond game. Two. That's not what I said. Ugh. But I believe it was a PS2 game. And then they recently announced Battlefield Five. Do you guys think that we really need another Battlefield Five? And if you were to buy it, what type? What would you want from it? Because I know they announced it, but I, I honestly know nothing about it. I don't, I don't think really... we need another Battlefield. Same goes for Call of Duty. I mean, it's not surprising that the video game industry hasn't changed anything in their formula i mean we're kind of stuck in this loop right now with the battle royale genre and not being able to go further with that idea other than like adding some new mechanics to the game and making it somewhat different from other games 
but it's still all nonsense garbage that they just rinse and repeat over and over again. So it's like, it's not surprising to me that they're going to fucking make another one. I mean, same with Assassin's Creed. They're fucking, I mean, I know we'll probably get get to that later, but they're also coming out with a new game apparently as well. But um, Origins, I heard, was a, a pretty solid Assassin's Creed installment to the series. So Yes, they did announce it. My, my, my actually turn out to be an okay game. Yeah, they did announce a new Assassin's Creed game, and I did hear that Origins was pretty decent. Uh, did you play? I have not played Origins, but it is on the list. Same. I know. I kind of it's it's on the down low. Same. So, moving on from EA, which uh, we you know I don't think any of us have high expectations for. I mean, or, I don't give a shit. Unfortunately, or, so or, guys who are. Fans of EA I mean, they're, they're just gonna Madden release now. another FIFA or Madden and make billions off of that. I mean, that's yeah, that's just like, that's YouTube just how they do it. Like opening packs. Yeah. KSI and all of them. They're like, oh, oh! Actually, KSI's totally moved on from FIFA. He's doing rap now. Fucking, I think he's gonna fight. What's his name? Uh, one of the one of the uh, Logan brothers. No, not. <laughs> okay. So, um, moving on oh, to the. Oh. Who's next in the list at E3 is actually Microsoft, and I believe they're having it also early. Uh, Microsoft, for the past couple years for me, they have not been able to compete with Sony at all. I mean, what Microsoft. Are, what are, what games to have? what extent? Are you talking about technology-wise? Like, Well, with the inter- I believe that... The recent Xbox that came out, which are, they call, it was called Scorpio, but I think it's called the Xbox One X, if I'm correct, uh, mm-hmm. is more hardware-wise, it's superior to the PS4. Okay. But why they haven't really performed is that they've been lacking in the game department for me, and it's it's. I think they're definitely stepping it up this year once we get there. So, what do you guys think of Microsoft? Uh, I oh. really don't know what to, I mean, I, again, I really don't know what to say about Microsoft in general as a company. Like, I, I haven't really played with uh, Xbox before. Um, I mean, I, I can't really anticipate what else they're going to be doing in the future either. Um, yeah, King, what are you going to say? I was going to say, because like X- Microsoft as a company, they did really well during like the whole 360 series, but I think they definitely fell off from what they were before. There's nothing like really anticipated that comes out for Xbox anymore, or at least in my opinion. Like there's Wait, no... What's the new Xbox called again? Xbox, Xbox One, One X. Xbox One X? Is the most oh, recent right. one, I believe, yes. Yeah, it's like when I hear... Like before, it would be like PS3 or Xbox 360, right? That would be the competition usually R- between the two. Yeah, right. That was that and was it. That, and then those sides were pretty even in terms of like, okay, well, you know, everybody has their opinion. It's like you know, it's fairly even on both sides. But it's like now there's it's like Xbox One X or PS4. It seems like majority of people are going for PS4, like you stated yeah. earlier. Now, now I re- the reason why I think that they, they actually have a shot this year is that there are a lot of rumored games. Way out. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the Oscars. <laughs> they That's did. The Oscars. I'm pretty sure that they did show off that game last year at E3 uh, at the uh, at Microsoft press conference. But this year, they, have, they haven't been confirmed, but they're probably most likely to show. Uh Crackdown 3 is obviously has been shown in the past E3s, but it's been delayed into, you know, basically development hell. Then the rumors are Gears of War 5. Mm-hmm. I can see They that. have Ori and uh, the Will of the Wisps, which I believe they showed off last year. That's kind of it. I'm sure they have more, because um, their shows are always kind of filled with kind of low-key indie games. Because mm-hmm. that's kind of how Xbox 360, you know, became big. Is because you know it was easy to get indie developer indie games on there. 
now that's yeah. kind of moved over to steam but i think those are yeah. the the two big ones that people want is crackdown and uh gears of war 5 because i know i love i love the gears of war series i don't even know about this game i'm just searching it up and i just see fucking terry cruz yeah oh that was that was the one where they uh advertised terry cruz like the advertisement advertisement for crackdown uh, it's me. last year yeah and then it's been like <laughs> delayed over and over and over again to a, a yeah. point where i think people have just forgotten about it i completely forgot about it i remember it was very hype last year and that's when they released like the terry cruz uh advertising but i i would really i really like to see uh gears of war 5 preferably a release date for it this year um i thought the story for four was very interesting trying to continue it off of uh how three ended mm-hmm um, Kane, I know you're also a huge Gears of War fan. What do you think? Yeah, I love fucking Gears of War. Um, I don't know. I feel like if they did do another Gears of War, I haven't played the most recent one. I've been meaning to buy it on PC and play through that. But, I mean, like, they've always, their mo- the campaign has always been, like, really good. And, like, all the other Gears of War games that I've played. All right. So I wouldn't be surprised if they do. It depends, too, because they did change the developers for Gears of War uh, Judgment. And then they switched up their multiplayer a little bit, which I know fucked with the competitive scene, but, like, they, they adapted to it. It wasn't as harsh as in, like, Gears of War Judgment. So I'm assuming that they know, like, what the direction they want to take the game in if they do release a new one. Right. I also believe, now that you remind me of that, Halo 6 is supposed to be, uh, it's been semi-rumored, I believe. Mm. Which, I think they're also, that's going to be, like, the final installment of the halo series which that's true you know that's that's kind of that's kind of big because they've been riding that hype train for decades now mm-hmm. so i mean i'm i really haven't been as much of a halo fan as i have been before but that's because like i just haven't been playing anything like i don't know how the story is and shit like that all right yeah so i mo- can't really speak on that one yeah so, moving on to the next uh, conference that's supposed to be at E3 is everyone's favorite company, Bethesda. Um, <laughs> they recently announced Fallout 76. I'm sure they have, you know, I think Bethesda's one of the best companies, you know, we have. Even though they won't give us the Elder Scrolls 6 for some reason, they still release yeah. great games. Um, there's also a rumor that... Uh, 76 is supposed to come out on uh the end of july did you guys oh, watch wait, the trailer already yes. yeah i watched the trailer for it already it's like supposed to come out that soon yeah interesting what do you think about it i mean i think if they do make the promise of making a multiplayer and having it be like this massive online game i would definitely check it out i don't know how much i would play it but I think that that's something that's been wanted for a while. And, you know, like, people have had custom servers that they make just to be able to play it online. Right. I mean, I, they, they're they they're a reliable company. I love the Dishonored games. Uh, Dishonored 2 came out not last year. I think 2016 it came out. Uh, last year, uh, Wolfenstein came out. Wolfenstein 2 came out. And that mm-hmm. was the first one was very good. And Bethesda does have kind of a recent history of um, releasing games in like the same year they announced them at E3. So mm-hmm. I would see 76. And then they have, I think they make a boat, like a shit ton of money off of The Elder Scrolls Online. Yeah, I bet. Which I think is honest, yeah. honestly the reason why they won't fucking make The Elder Scrolls 6. Because let's face it, just, just, can we all agree? Just give us the fucking Elder Scrolls Six, and just you know, so we don't have to make fucking Skyrim memes about like them putting them on a rock now or porting it to a fucking toaster, you know? What you look at every day. I mean, that's that's what happens whenever they uh, like Sorry. people, because people get hyped. They're like, oh, it's Bethesda. They're finally gonna announce it. The oh, Elder Scrolls Six. It's gonna happen. And then they say we're porting Skyrim to the Switch. <laughs> so what happened yeah. <laughs> the game came out in like 2012 
it's it's like it's like six years old now. It's over six years old. Yeah, they did do like a whole remastered version of it, and they're like, yeah, we're putting it on the Switch now. I mean, the other part that you have to consider is that it just holds up pretty well for its time. It's just like, yeah, they're kind of. I feel like they're just they're really like dragging it out, like milking it. Which is, I don't know if I like that. They're in but... the same conundrum that fucking uh, Gearbox Studios was in with fucking Borderlands. They didn't know what to do, so they made a pre-sequel from god awful Australian actors and actresses. It was just like. No, no offense. It was just really awkward having to hear every single like, you know, voice actor be Australian. It was just Damn like, Aussies, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think the only thing it was clear like money bait, like you know, just yeah. hey, whatever. I think the only thing we really want from Bethesda is uh, the Elder Scrolls Six again. I, I know they have a. You know, they will definitely have a bag of tricks. They usually do. Uh, uh, just don't give us Skyrim VR, Skyrim uh, Switch, Skyrim Remastered, Remastered Edition, anything like that. I think people are done with it. They're tired with it. Nobody wants that. The only th- shady thing that I could say about Bethesda as a company is the whole mod scene. Where... Because what they do is, um, they're trying to make money off the modders, basically. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> if you go into my Steam right now, I mm-hmm. own two versions of Skyrim. Okay. I have, uh, Skyrim, you know, when it first came out, and then I have Skyrim Remastered Edition, right? Where they mm-hmm. remastered it. I cannot mod the Skyrim Remastered Edition. Interesting. Wait, Why? They just don't let you because they don't want, you know, which why is why one of these games like 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 what you just said, like why these games can like stay relevant is because you can mod them. I can make the game look better than it than its default vanilla state state. I can add, you know, fucking Thomas the Tank Engine or fucking (laughs) boobs if I wanted to. Right. Exactly. I can add the anime titties. But when they when they take that power away, it's taking from the community, and that's always been you know a back and forth mm-hmm. thing with them, and that's been a you know a fight that's been going on through the years. So, moving on from that is our se- uh, the second most controversial company, uh, Ubisoft. Uh, I think- they're they're not as bad as EA. They've definitely stepped up their game. The ports have been so goddamn awful to the PC. It's like it's not even funny. Like Assassin's Creed, Splinter Cell, Watch Dogs, all those games. Like not only just by the controls, but also just visually, the graphics have just been super slow. I mean, fucking Watch Dogs. Like that game, they have not fixed, and they just stopped trying after like so long. They were just like, you know what? This is what you wanted. This is what we gave you. It's like, no, this is not what you promised, promised us. You actually promised us actual scenery from Chicago and the gameplay trailer from fucking whatever the first uh, gameplay trailer came out, and then you give us like. This weird fucking shit downtown. The bean is in a bean. It's like a weird intestine, like, you know. I made a mistake. Anyway, yeah, a lot of hatred. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 is a Ubisoft game. Um, Interesting. Like you said before, TJ, they announced... uh, Well, it actually got leaked, and then they said, fuck it, let's announce it. Oh, another Spider Cell game? Uh, That is on the list. Yeah. I don't uh, know. Is that like a reboot or is that going to be an addition to the series? I think it's a di- addition to the series because The Division 2 is also confirmed. Uh, I don't know it's, how that's going to work out. It's interesting because they, they hinted that the Division universe mixed with the uh, Tom Clancy universe. I mean, not Tom Clancy. Uh, the, uh, Splinter Cell? Splinter Cell. Yeah. Uh, uh, What's his name? Stan Fisher storyline. Yeah. Mm. And how they're kind of interwoven together. They also, uh, they actually have a ton of games confirmed. They also have four of four honors supposed to be a thing. I think they, you know, they're probably adding to that. 
uh, the new Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is a sequel to Origins, which they haven't done sequels since Ezio, really. So Ubisoft, um, actually a very interesting thing about them is that that, remember that fucking Rabbits game from last year's E3? It was the Rabbit and Mario crossover? Yeah. That did really well, apparently. Yeah, it did. It's like one of the top games on the Switch. I haven't played I it. Yeah. I will probably never play it. But I, I accept it. But you have it? Have you played it? No, I haven't played it. I watched my brother play it. It's just like a classic RPG. It's like a really easy, like really simple turn-based RPG. Hmm. But that was that's supposed to be, supposed to be really good. Uh, I think you know they're they're not as bad as EA as I would rank them. They're probably right under. I know. No, uh, definitely not. I think they produce. Um... They produce good quality games, I feel, some of the time. It's just, again, the issue is just important. Well, I feel like they rush them. Like, they rush their games. And when they're first release, they're in a very bad state. So they get bad rep for it. And then they eventually fix it. definitely felt rushed. I mean... Yeah, it was was very... The multiplayer was very simple. Yeah, they didn't develop that very well, and I think that's why I lost traction. Really yeah, because For Honor oh, had a very bad launch. It was very janky, and it's still janky. And yeah. then so so did The Division, but they actually stopped. Oh, yeah. They stopped. The Division was awful. Yeah, they stopped their entire like DLC just to fix that game, which is you know most I respect that. most people don't do that. Cough, cough, Bungie. Uh, <laughs> True. Next after Ubisoft is honestly one of my square uh I'm square oh, i'm already uh, oh, i'm so squares. i'm so happy uh square enix is it's they're such a good fucking company dude i i honestly i just cannot echo what square enix Ch- is Ch- like your fucking underpants. yeah dude i mean i just love the japanese i guess Jeez. square but square enix is balling it so um right. what games do they have coming up taven well, I'm they glad have, you asked. I'm very glad you asked because they have the Final Fantasy VII remake. Yeah, well, I remember when they announced it. What was it? Think with Cloud. With Cloud, yeah. Saranth, uh, fucking the bad guy. I can't remember that. Sephiroth, uh, mm-hmm. Ares, uh, fucking Brett. Um, I was actually. They announced this game back in 2015, maybe? Right? It's been a while. It's been a while. while. There hasn't been really any news about it. They said that they wanted to release it in episodes. Um, But we do know it's been somewhat in production because the man who did the original soundtrack for Final Fantasy, the OG Final Fantasy VII, um... has started making like revamping the soundtrack uh i'm i was very hyped for this game and i was never able to play it because i was not really born yet so i went back and uh (laughs) i went back and played final fate no i you buy it on steam you can even play it on your phone there's an app version of it but i went back and played seven I you, I understand why it's it's held up, like why it's regarded such a legendary game. Why? It's Please. the story is very. It's a very well written story. It was long as fuck for games back then. I didn't expect it to be like. It was like it was a good content. Like if it was sixty bucks, like I still were. I think that game, even though the graphics are like shit by today's standards. Uh, if it was 60 bucks on Steam right now, I think it's still worth that price. Because the story they tell, and the way they tell it, as well as the, uh, just the combat of it, you know, it's still, like, turn-based old-timey. And the music, just, it's, I highly recommend you guys play the game. I highly recommend. Take them in to get into, because, you know, there's newer, better shit, and we're just kind of used to that. But once you get into that, it's very good. Other than that, I think their other big kind of announcement, which has been confirmed, is Kingdom Hearts 3. Mm-hmm. I've been going back 
and playing the Kingdom Hearts. I finished one. I'm currently on two. Uh, I believe we've all seen trailers for this game, right? Yes. Yeah. What are your thoughts on it? Uh, I'm kind of hyped for it because it's been a while since they released the Kingdom Hearts game. 2006. Like 2006 yeah. was Kingdom Hearts 2's release date. So, especially now with, like, all the modern Disney shit and, like, now that they own Star Wars and stuff. And I'm Marvel. Kinda, kinda in- yeah, and Marvel. I'm kind of interested to see how this is going to go. I think, yeah, I think I'm really interested in what type of worlds they do because I think Kingdom Hearts 2 playing through it now, they did some pretty, you know, they did the classics and then they added more classic worlds. I think, like, one of the ones that stand out to me in the current Kingdom Hearts 2 is uh, Pirates of the Caribbean world. But, uh... Now they can fucking do, you know, Star Wars. We know Toy yeah, Story. Yeah, making the monsters thing. Cool. Yeah, we know Monster yeah, Eggs the in there. Really cool. We know Toy Story is in there. Toy Story is one of my favorite Disney, you know, productions or Pixar productions of all time. I, you know, mm-hmm. I apparently of course Toy Story three. I was crying. My mom told me. <laughs> I just, I just love that movie that much, and you know. So, what would you guys want to see from Kingdom Hearts 3? Like, the classic feeling of just, like, bashing on the Heartless and, like, a ton of abilities. Because I don't know. Honestly, like, the new weapons that they added where it's, like, roller coasters and shit, I'm not really... I, like, would, I prefer, like, the Keyblades and everything, but... I mean, these new weapons are pretty interesting, I guess, just because, like, the different types of weapons that they made, where it's, like, the yo-yo, and then they have fucking the the girl in the fucking tower, all that stuff. Like, they have the teacup ride. Like, I think it's cool in a way because it's, like, you know, you don't really kill shit with teacup rides. (laughs) But uh, they figured they were just like, let's put that in there, so... I don't know. I feel like that was just more of like advertisement to me rather than them trying to develop weapons for Sora. I be- I totally agree. What I would like to see from it is well, the audience who grew up with Kingdom Hearts 2 has grown. They're now yeah. our age, they're now 20, you know, they're in the working force. They're in like the 2030s. I would like to see the game grow as well. And basically what I mean by that is, please don't make Sora, like, a, just, like, so fucking oblivious and just a little kid. I Like, I understand it's Disney, it's a kid's game, but I'd like to see those characters, it be more serious of a game. You know? Yeah. Uh, What do you guys think of it being on Xbox One? Because historically, I do not believe they've been, been on exclusive, Xbox. It's been exclusive, Tony. Yeah, yeah. It's been exclusive. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that they're just doing it to like get more moon money because I'm assuming if they release that one, then down like down the line they'll eventually release the remastered edition where it's like the remix version just on Xbox. It's final mix, yeah. Yeah. So and and they already released the uh, uh, theme song for it. Um, Passion was an amazing song. I wasn't a fan of this one at first but it grew on me um can you listen to it too the uh yeah yeah um other than that uh, i think it's gonna be there at e3 i will hopefully get a chance to play it while i'm there uh so i can give you my opinion on it afterwards uh i believe final fantasy 14 content will be there of course you know that's their big money savior as well as some other games. So moving on from Square Enix, we get to my second, or you know, another one of the big, my favorite big companies. Hello games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Sony. <laughs> so, I mean. Do we even need like an introduction for Sony? I mean, they got well. They always for the past since since the PS3s or three. Well, yeah, since the PS3, since the PS1, really. But since the PS4's launch, they've been top dog, and they've had uh-huh. one hell of a lineup of games. Yeah. 
So what what do you guys think of Sony? We all, I mean, we all except TJ owns PS4s. I mean, come on. Sony, I mean, I well, first of all, they've like branched off from their developing like technology to focus more on the gaming industry, which I thought was pretty cool. Because before, I only knew of Sony when like PlayStation Three and shit was coming out. I only knew Sony as like a company that made video games but like their main shit was like sort like home theater and like um what's it called like tvs and sound like speaker sound quality like that's what i knew them for but then they shifted their focus more towards gaming and or, or i think in my opinion they shifted more focus towards gaming with the playstation 4 and then they, since then they've just been developing because they already have like the resources to develop technology so they just developed um i feel like they developed fucking uh gaming way more than yeah. what like than how they were before because before it was just like they would release the same titles like the xbox and like indie games and a few exclusive releases but majority of it was just like you could it was nothing special like it was just a different version of the xbox right i think i think that's actually interesting you said that because i feel like the the roles have kind of swapped where mm-hmm. where Sony's making the better games and Xbox is making the better technology. Yeah. I can see that cuz Sony definitely has stepped up their game when they're actually making games by making games. So Xbox, I haven't really looked at new Xbox like Microsoft tech, but I do think that they have shifted. Actually, that makes yeah, yeah, yeah I see what you're saying. Yeah, they definitely did that cuz fucking all these new Surface tablets and everything, they shifted the focus from gaming into more technology and like them trying to develop a better laptop, which doesn't, to me, doesn't make sense because you're better off developing a computer, like desktop, but. Right, and cool. you can buy Microsoft games on their Microsoft store on computers. So yeah. that's, that's preferably. Uh, TJ, what do you think of Sony? Um. I know you don't have a console, but just based on the shows that you watch, because I know you watch past E3 performances of theirs with me. I mean, I'm looking at the lineup of games that are, like, confirmed in New All right. So why you do yeah, that? Yeah, just, it just seems like, yeah, as you stated, they're kind of just dominating right now, and they're, like, expanding. I mean, most of these games are compatible with the PS4, but otherwise, you know, everything else is kind of iffy. Especially PC, but that's just PC, so. So, Tito, what do you think? I'm super excited for Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right let's, that's, let's intro into that. Spider-Man's the first, uh, It's they announced it a couple years back at E3. Uh, <laughs> people were saying it was going to be the next Batman. Yes. Uh, previous Spider-Man games have not been... Fan- they've been all right. They haven't been fantastic, but this one looks like they've really put in the time and the work. And I know you've already pre-ordered the Masters Edition. Yeah. Um. What do you guys want from Spider-Man? I did want them to implement like an actual web shooting system where it's not just it auto hooks to a bu- like a part of a building that you can't see, and you all you know is that it shoots up. I do like that they make you actually interact with Spider-Man himself and focus more on like movement and choreography of like jumping through the air and stuff like that. If they can do a lot of it. what they did in like the Arkham games with the grapple hook, but with less of just like you know, you know, I zip lining from one one point to another, it's like actually swinging motion. Uh, they're gonna have to work with the. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Cause Ar- yeah, Arkham has kind of these this, the two kind of fighting styles: the gadget fighting style, and then like the just you know normal just beat them up, beat the shit out of them fighting style. And I feel like I mean, with... gadgets are definitely going to be a thing for the new Spider-Man game. Yeah, it's but I, you know how they are kind of, they're just kind of separate. They you know they put them throughout the games. They put them more together, but they're just kind of separate. But within yeah. the combat, but I feel like with Spider-Man, you have to, you have to combine the two because you know, then what's the point of him having you know webs? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's just, so it's it's really I think what makes it will make this game successful, is 
I'm not really doubting the story being told because generally games from Sony have very good stories. Uh, God of War, for instance, that just came out. Uh, Jesus Christ, it was it was so Jesus well Christ done. Jesus Christ came out in the fucking. Yeah, that came out in 2002 on nice. uh, the Nintendo uh, Nintendo. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yes, the Nintendo Nintendo. Yeah, best console of its time. Uh, but you know that was God of War is great. Persona Five was great. Horizon Zero Dawn was great. They're all great storytelling games, and that's why, like for Spider Man, uh, I don't have a. It's that's not where my doubts lie. My doubts lie in will it be good combat? Really, you know, will it be engaging? They said, they said that there are like a bunch of different combinations of like webs. Like there's gonna be web grenades and a bunch of different stuff. Right. Yeah, I, that, yeah. I feel like they're again with the same thing as the Arkham games. They're basing them off the movies because when movie that came out during or during that time was The Dark Knight, right? And the technology they were talking about in that game, I mean not in that game, yeah. in the movie was the sonar frequency using the cell phones, and then they had something similar to that in detective mode. Uh, yeah, the detective mode essentially. Yeah, so. I feel like they're picking that up from Homecoming, especially the scene where um, Tom Holland's uh, Spider-Man, he's like practicing with like the different uh, functions of a suit. Right. So a part of the film culture is, you know, going to be, a, well, I mean, it might come from the comics anyway, too. So. Right. Yeah. Let me ask you this. We know it's going to be Peter Parker, I believe. But would you rather ha- have be in Ben uh, Miles Morale? Isn't he gonna be in it too? I think he. I, I don't know, but I would love to see him in it. He, they're doing like a Spider Verse movie or something like that with him in it. So, yeah. But I don't know if he's gonna be in the game. Um, I don't read the comics as much. No, Marvel just... comics are shit. They're not. They're not worth reading. Marvel yeah. comics are not worth reading. So. Moving on, uh, there's some other PlayStation exclusives. I'm going to read kind of the ones that stand out to me. Uh, mm-hmm. Death Stranding. Um, do you guys need back- background on this game? Yeah, I don't no, think I don't. Title. So it's, it's made by uh, Hito Kojima, who is yeah. the man Metal behind Gear. the Metal Gear. Uh, he had Fallout with Konami, which was the company that made Metal Gear. And mm. they've been at kind of a war ever since. So he left, and um, Sony was like, hey, you know, Sony being Sony was like, hey, uh, we'll give you a check for, you know, however much you need and full, you know, power to make this game. Just, <laughs> uh, just you know, it has to be exclusive, and it's got to be, you know, fucking crazy. And, you you know, they're all speaking Japanese, of course, when this is happening. And, uh, you know, Hiro Kojima was like, sure, you know, fuck yeah. So he partnered up with Norman Reedus, who plays uh, Daryl on The Walking Dead. Wait, 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 wait. Norman Reedus, Mads Mikkelsen, uh, there's a third guy, Guillermo del Toro, um... Who else is in the cast as well? There's another uh, actor I'm forgetting. Anyway, yeah, I, I love the cast so far that they have for the uh, game so far. Um, he's being very ominous and mysterious with what the game is about. Yeah. There's been From nothing the about this game. that we've seen. There's only been uh, two. There's only like, been two. It's It seems like there's some kind of like alien threat or presence. No, there's been three. There's been three trailers. Has there? There's, there's Wait, the Norman Reedus one, and then there was the... Magical there's one, like, trailer earlier. Trailer. This... And then there was a third one where it was showing a little bit of exposition behind what was going on. It was, like, three guys in a field with the invisible creatures, and they actually attacked some of the uh, right, right. individuals. It's, it's interesting, too, from that trailer. Also, the people who were captured, they would have rather killed themselves than be sent to whatever fate, fate that the creature sent them to. So it, it, it's really scary where the storyline is going to, and I, I, I like that. And um, I'm glad that you uh, told me that Sony gave, like, 
they they were, he was originally trying to make a Silent Hill game, I believe, and that oh, didn't yeah, work but out. That didn't, yeah. That's but I, this game it just has so much mystery behind it that it 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 has to show up this year and it has to have an announce date this year because there's so much mystery behind it and you know I want to know why they're eating babies and you know why there's fucking babies everywhere and why is he naked you know there's so many questions about this game and it's kojima man like metal gear I mean, man I, like i enjoy that because it leaves some mystery to discover what the game's about and especially like i mean not just with like video game trailers but with movie trailers too they just reveal way too much to the point where it's just like there's nothing to surprise you which mm-hmm. leaves come kind of some of the enjoyment of like discovering the game like left out so I'm glad he's pursuing, you know, releasing the game and its content in this manner because it leaves some mystery for the audience to be like, and in the state that we are now, we're really interested where the kind of storyline is going. So I totally agree. Thing. What I'm just interested in is like I'm okay with keeping a game on the down low, but they haven't advertised for it at all, and it just gets to a point where. You just kind of forget I about it. I feel after E3, they're going to start doing that a little bit more. Right. So, Death Stranding, up there. Spider-Man, up there. Last of Us Part 2. Mm-hmm. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be like interesting. It. They It was announced, um, I think, earlier this year, or maybe last year, at the uh, PlayStation Con, their conference. Yeah, uh, Mm-hmm. The Last of Us is deemed one of the, well, you know, it's a, one of the best games on the PS3 when it originally like, came out. Yeah, when when Xbox had like Halo and Gears of War, like Sony had The Last of Us, which is Uncharted, which are good, two good story games. Oh, Last of Us, yeah, yeah. the second one's supposed to come it's, out. I'm gonna be honest here; those clickers when I was younger scared the shit out of me, and it's why I didn't play it. But when I played it, they they weren't that scared. Are you serious? Yeah. I thought those fucking... I mean... Those things are kind of creepy, dude. Yes. Those are some creepy zombies. I already knew it was a storyline-based game, so some of the mechanics were going to be underdone. And in terms of the clickers, I felt they were kind of easy to navigate around. Yeah, like, once I, once, once I played it, it was... It became easy. It's the hard difficulty is supposed to be, like, very fucking hard. But, yeah, I mean, like, that's also... I'm not saying you can't have good gameplay as well as a good storyline. I'm just saying mm-hmm. that when it comes to, like, having, like, such a critical storyline as Last of Us, there are things that are probably going to be overlooked for the gameplay because... It's, it's also more, it's also a game that is... There is there's still more mystery behind it. I mean, I think it's one of the well, things Sony does well. Well, they left it there's a lot of potential for the game to pick up after that ending, um, and I think, you know. But the it's next it's game it's start. it's sitting in the same realm that Death Stranding is. Is that we don't know much about it. Like, I think Sony's just kind of good at doing that. Mm-hmm. Is they just like shit here, like EA, Ubisoft, uh, not really Microsoft, but like Bungie especially they get like Link. Between... They get they get yeah. I think the difference between Death Stranding and Last of Us Part Two is just that, I mean, obviously the first thing is that Death Stranding is its like new game, like it's starting fresh. Whilst Last of Us is like this is a sequel game, so we kind of already know the world and we know what's going on already, and we don't. And it's like there is more for it to go to. I mean, the storyline, but it's just like where is that and it doesn't really show that in the trailer it's just like you kind of see them in like a desperate situation where they're still surviving and it's like there's no real threat except for just you know again the zombies obviously yeah like they haven't shown anything like and i think that's also the other thing with uh kojima with the stranding is that they're hinting at um more things within the realm of the video game that Mm -hmm. we don't understand but we want to see well, again, Last of Us Part Two is just showing, okay, the new game is coming out. You should be excited because they kind of feel like, okay, you assume it's going to be a good start because the first one was good, so the second one should be as good, right? 
Right. But they're not showing that. So, yeah. The, again, I feel like after E3 and all the announcements, that's when things are going to actually start blowing up for um, advertising these games and such. Right. I, you know, I definitely agree. So, uh, love. Last but not least, before we get into the free for all, uh, Nintendo. Uh, the Switch came out last year, March. Mm-hmm. Of it's you know the hottest shit. It's been, uh, it's, been a journey. It's, mm-hmm. it's it's it had a great launch with Breath of the Wild. Um, yeah. Odyssey came after it. There's some great indie games on it. Uh, lots of ports. Lots of so good ports. Good port. Of yeah, Payday 2. Payday 2. Uh, <laughs> what else did I... Uh, that's it. That's it. No, that's all, that's Bayonetta all 2 did very well on it. Uh, I played Xenoblade Chronicles 2 on it. I, I really enjoyed that Monster game. Monster Hunter! That came out. That's not a Monster Switch. Monster Hunter! That's, that's on, like, Monster. everything. That's on everything. Yeah, so, okay. Nintendo... I think there's only two games that I really care about from them. They're getting Roller Coaster Tycoon for the Switch. <laughs> They're getting Monster Hunter Generations Unlimited. Uh, Galic Z, very, I don't even know what the fuck that game is. Uh, Smash Bros, right? Yeah. Switch Edition. Uh, it's, it's confirmed to be there, and it's, I think it's confirmed to be playable. So I'm going to try and play that. Okay. What are you guys' thoughts on it? I'm not really a Smash fan, but I'll play with friends. It's always fun. Um, I want I want some Pokemon games though. I'll be honest. I'll get to that last. I'll I'll, t- I'll share what I have, what I know about Pokemon. Uh, right, dude, sick. Because they just you know they announced they just released some sort of Pokemon game. Uh, I think Smash is it's it was needed. It's definitely needed. Because the only reason you can play Smash, right? The only way you can play Smash is fucking Wii U, and you know, no one's doing that shit. Especially as as like how well the Switch has sold. They need it. Um, it's supposed to be a sequel to like Wii U Smash. Uh, I don't know how they're gonna do that. Um, it's just been announced, and everyone, you know, you know, everyone knows kind of what to know. What to get, what you get when you buy a Smash game. Yeah. So I don't think there's been like a huge bunch, like a hype around it. It's just like, you know, finally, why wasn't this a thing? Uh, I think the ones that people are kind of looking for, which haven't really been announced, are uh, Metro, Metroid Prime 4. Mm-hmm. That's what people want to see. Um, it was showed off at E3 a couple years back. And, you know, it's I never I can't really put a lot of background to this game because I've never played a Metroid game because I really wasn't born yet. But you know, <laughs> uh, any thoughts on that? Anyone on the Metroid games? Yeah, I played the last Metroid game I played was Metroid Other M, and it was alright. It wasn't anything special because it was. I honestly haven't followed a lot of the Metroid storyline. The last one I played was Other M, and that one had a pretty interesting storyline just because it was, like, it focused more on, like, the the task force of the game or of the in the story rather than, like, Samus herself. It focused more on the story of the task force around them. Right. So... I haven't really played. I played like a free trial for 30 minutes on on live when that was still a thing. And I thought it was an interesting game and I wanted to get more into it. But I mean, again, on live and the service was shit. And uh, I was uh, running on a budget and it was really just fucking just cause two for me. So, yeah. Shout out if you if, if you were around during the on live days, dude. Yo, yo, shout out to OnLive. Bring OnLive back. Yeah, bring OnLive back. Um, uh, it was E3. We, we announced OnLive coming back. Right. So now we're getting into the free-for-all. Uh, I want you guys to just... I'm just going to go down uh, 
through the list of games first that are kind of not exclusive to anything. Uh, thoughts and opinions. Then we list games that we want in the future, like The Elder Scrolls Six and uh, Borderlands 3 that have not been announced at all, but have a chance to appear, maybe, as a surprise. Uh, the first kind of big one I think that's on the list is Black Ops 4. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've, it has multiplayer, of course. It's less story-oriented. And... Uh, Battle Royale. Battle Royale, that's right. Yeah. Um, and Zombies. What do you guys think? You you want anything? Um, you gotta buy it. I mean, um, one game that I'm interested in seeing and that I've seen rumored on the uh, lineup is uh, wait, hold on, sorry, Cyberpunk 2077. We'll get to that. I want to talk about That's COD good. first. Oh, COD. Yeah. Um. Fuck it, yeah. I'm just, I'm down for the fucking zombies. That's. Okay. I mean, that's. I think that's it. I think at this point, that's all we're down for. The series yeah. needs to just die. I think like Call of Duty yeah. as a genre is just like. I think there's a huge competitive scene for it. I believe, but it's just, it's not what it used to be. It's and, a lot more satisfying and more realistic. The COD standard of zombie shooting, as opposed to like Left 4 Dead and Killing Floor Two. Um, but again, it's just like. I, the whole format, as I've said before, with even battle royale games, it's just like zombie shooters, is just like getting old. It's like, I guess there's a certain point where like shooting a whole wave of like, you know, mob of enemies gets just tiring. It's just like mm-hmm. repetitive same shit over and over again. So it's like, yeah, with the new COD game, it might not even do that well, especially with zombies or any improvements to the zombies, because again, it's just mob shooting. It's just that fucking format needs to die and they need to grow out of it and change. I think we need to remastering old stuff just to get people to buy it. Yeah, but I think like the only reason like this COD has a chance out of like any other COD is because of Treyarch. I think yeah, they're Treyarch's viable so. uh, as like the only Call of Duty making company. Uh, yeah. So we'll we'll move on from them. We did Kingdom Hearts three. Mega Man eleven apparently is announced. Uh, oh, a completely new one. Yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee oh. is supposed to be. It's it's there for the Switch. Um, there's been rumors about the new Pokemon game that's been kind of flying around. It's supposed to be Generation 9. It's supposed to be on the Switch. It was supposed to be made in like Unreal Engine. And it's supposed to be like a huge step up from the DS that we know. Um, other than that, there's really nothing about it. Uh, it would be cool if it was announced this year at E3. But I don't think it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rage 2. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of ads for Rage 2. It's apparently a thing. Uh, Street Fighter V Arcade Edition is supposed to be a thing. Mm-hmm. Which I don't know. They're probably just, It's probably just going to be a small event. There's supposed to be a Fortnite event. There's no real thing about that. But, you know, it's supposed to be of some sort of Fortnite event uh, cyberpunk 2077 like you said i would love to see just because it's made by the same people who make the witchers and they're a company that actually cares about you know their games uh you know that trip and it's always it, the, the games the history behind that game has been really weird because they've been like not like i heard something like like they're not paying their investors because they're like trying to fund it like crowdfund it themselves and then like the trailer came out like years ago and then they're like creating like new technology for it so it's just been so weird you know what i'm saying it's just like you know it's uh it's been it's been like one of those 
processes where it, is it in development or is it not in development or like we don't know what's which stage it's in yeah so kirby is supposed to be a thing i believe we saw that a couple years back life is strange too please no i'm just like really? oh no <laughs> life really, is part two of that they they right? came out before the they came out before it with before the storm recently. My problem with life is strange is that it, it hits too close to home. Oh, they Walking Dead is coming out too. Yeah, yeah, that is coming out. But life is strange hits too close to home. Being just you know graduating from high school or, or high school and now being like I'm finishing like my freshman year of college, it's like. It's play, too play, relatable. yeah, it's too relatable. It's like, and it's fuck? too cringy, and it's kind of like, what the fuck? That doesn't happen in high school, you know? It's kind of like that, but oh, so like that's why versus oh, zombies, no. Garden Warfare three, uh, so WWE or WWE two K nineteen, WWE, yeah, yeah, dude. right, Yoshi, and that's kind of, and then there's some other uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I don't care for these games, nor do I give a shit. Um, no Man's Sky. Stop. Can you stop making No Man's Sky jokes, dude? No one gives a shit about that shitty ass game. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can safely say it's one of the worst games that ever existed. Uh, <laughs> for fucking what? Tito's gonna four see years. Survivor. Tito is the She's only. i July 24th with no update. Yeah. Calling it. Yeah, sure. You're the only one who's still playing that game. Tito's gonna single-handedly revive that fucking game. It's that game is gone. That game is the. And anyway, so <laughs> let's move on. Uh, free for all. Yeah. What would you all like to see? Sequels, <gasps> prequels, shit that hasn't even been existed or thought of. What do you want to see? Wait for what? Any game. Borderlands 3. Borderlands 3, of course. Borderlands 3, Left 4 Dead 3. No, hell no. Are you kidding? Hell no, dude. Come on. Um, what was it? The Cyberpunk 2077. You can't say uh, that. I mean, it's... It's, it's rumored. Why not? It's rumored? <laughs> it's rumored to what? be there. Wait, why don't we have a DM? What if it is that? Well, then, it, it's there. But, I mean, like... Borderlands 2, The Elder Scrolls 6, are not rumored or anything at all. Like, those are, like, what I want to see. Like, if I get those two games, I'm happy. I'm walking away with a big smile on my face. You know? Borderlands 3, um, fucking... Can we get a sequel to Hoonie Pop? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> no. Louder, son! <laughs> no. Um... Let me get a Payday 3, guys. So that that Payday game is supposed to be probably going to show up. Like the zombie fucking game. Oh, Walking Dead by Overkill? Yeah. yeah. Um, sick. Gnarly dude. I was, Persona 5? I mean, not 5, 6. 6. If that showed up, it's, I, it's you know, that's that's a no. Oh, Terraria 2. Definitely up there. That's, that's more of an indie. I don't think that. If that showed up, that would be cool as well. Uh, I would like to see Fortnite for the Switch. I think that's probably what they're probably going to announce at this whole Fortnite event thing. Um, oh, yeah, that'd be nice. I think that would be a very nice addition to the Switch. I feel like the Switch also needs more storytelling games. Uh, I would love to see another this next Zelda game. But, you know, that's a long shot. I don't know. Maybe a Mass Effect done right. Nice driving game. Game, I don't know. Cars? Yeah, like cars. Oh, cars, yeah. Yeah, cars. Maybe that can be a world in, in, uh... Is Cars oh, Disney? Cars, in... cars, is, cars Disney. is Disney. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be a cool world cars. in Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah. Do that. That would be hella weird. <laughs> Uh, Sora would be a car. You get to drive Lightning McQueen. You get to be inside him. Right. No, you get to you know no, you become, turn, you become a car. You yeah, a car. you turn, yeah, into, you turn a into a car. Into a car. 
You don't drive him, you turn into him. You are him. Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah uh... What else, man? I mean, there's just... No, that's it, really. I mean, that's... All I really want to see is just... Uh, Nothing Scrolls zombie or fucking Battle Royale related, please. God, give me a good storyline. Yeah, that's that's what I want. Like, if I get a Persona 6 or Elder Scrolls 6 or Borderlands 3, I'll be happy. Oh, you know... Never mind. I'll save it after. It's my bad. No, go ahead. No, no, it's for the... It's for Friday. What? I was gonna say, like, storyline, we could play The Walking Dead on Friday. We could. We could. On the big screen and start making choices together. I feel like that'd be a fun activity. Just do, like, a alternative, like, anomalous vote thing. Yeah. Like, it would be quick time events, too, so we'd have to, like, fucking vote decide, hella. like... Right, left, like, just yell it really fast. That yeah. could be interesting. That could be a lot of fun as, like, a party thing. So, um, let's wrap it up, because... Yeah, my bad. I didn't uh, know yeah. That's per. It's fine. Uh, because we've been going for an hour. Uh, any closing remarks? Yes, uh, it's not always great. Guys... <laughs> you suck, Tito. You honestly <laughs> suck. Come in the Xbox One, it's over. Can, can we have a moment of silence really quickly? Guys. For what? Even though... Even though Bully Hunters, the organization, <laughs> shut down, we still have to equally respect female gamers and male gamers to like and to not slander and to harass each other and respect the video game video gaming community is this <laughs> respect for bully <laughs> hunters yeah so i just when you come when you when you arrive at the e3 uh, uh uh convention just just reach out to somebody and tell them it's gonna be okay and tell them that you know they're gonna be a supportive guy when you meet them in game possibly yeah whatever game that they play because the video game community, we're going to start changing. We're going to start becoming more positive in PC. <laughs> and <lighted. laughs> I mean, I'm down for that. Reach out to me on my Twitter. Um, you can find any of these guys on their Twitters. Uh, I don't use Twitter. Or their Instagrams. Or you can just follow us at It's Not a Sport. Or subscribe. Um, I'm intro and out. Thanks for listening. And yeah. yeah. Have a good night. Yeah. Um, enjoy E3. And, uh, you know, be sure to bring back some uh, souvenirs and uh, don't, 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 get, uh, don't get caught in a hotel room with the uh, cosplay. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. He's a camper. I don't want to be in there. Yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah. I hope all you guys watch E3. I hope you enjoy it. You know, I, this guy there. He's gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna be there, dude. I'm just so excited. Shit. I'm not gonna have my own panel, but I'm gonna be walking <laughs> around. <laughs> just have a sign up, but yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, but catch this guy out there. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for listening. hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of It's Not a Sport. Uh, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube, our Instagram, etc., etc., all that social media. And tune in next week for another great episode of It's Not a Sport. Thanks for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day.